agree and have for some long, long time now that none of the Gospels are written by eyewitnesses, none of them. And it's a mistake to think they were. We now know why they're not written by eyewitnesses. They don't claim to be written by eyewitnesses. They're second generation, anonymous texts. The earliest disciples were, un were unlettered, uneducated people. They didn't read and write Greek. They were Aramaic, Aramaic speaking peasants. They couldn't have written the Gospels. And this is the view of virtually all experts, if you just re read their stuff. Now, there are fundamentalist scholars in the States. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's hay fever. Hay fever. Every year. <coughs> I can feel it in my throat. That's how I was always. <clears throat> oh, that's better. Thank you very much, brother, whoever, whoever that was. I appreciate it. So I'm just quoting professors, experts in the field, teaching at King's College here in London, wherever you go. The masses have been written on this over, over generations now. The consensus is Matthew's not written by someone called Matthew. I'm sorry this is news to you. I'm sorry this is news to you. I uh, and quoting uh, Matt Ehrman as an expert on this. Well, he, he's an expert on texts, and I quoted him by that there's no early Matthew, uh, Matthew Gospel in the century. Because he comes from a presupposition of God doesn't exist and the Bible isn't inspired. Of course he's going to say no. that that. He's going to... No, Christians agree with him. Christian scholars, in the main, agree with him. The, the, the vast majority of Christian scholars would agree there's no evidence. What is the evidence the Apostle Matthew wrote Matthew's Gospel, for example? You, you educate me, perhaps. Tell me what the evidence is. I've told you what the evidence isn't, or against it, but what's the evidence for it? I'm not certain of feel for something within the text that says Well, is there anything in the text that says it's written by Matthew? In the text, if you read Matthew's Gospel, does it say, this is written by Matthew? Does it say that? We're not wanting to draw attention to themselves. So, why Matthew did this, it's about Jesus. Okay, so you don't claim to be written, so you can see that Matthew doesn't claim to be written by Matthew. Is there anything in it that suggests it was eyewitness? Does it talk in the first person? If I have tea with the Queen and I write it up on my blog tonight, wow, I had tea with the Queen. I went to Buckingham Palace, had a great time. I wouldn't be modest and say, well, someone else went there and not mention the fact that I wasn't there. If I was a disciple of Jesus and I was writing his biography, his Sira, I would mention that I met him. And this was when it happened, and he said this to me. If you read Matthew, it's nothing like that. Not once does he speak in the first person. I met Jesus, he said to because, me. Because, Why is that? Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all had met the risen <coughs> Jesus and knew the story wasn't about them. The reason why you would write, I sat down with the tea, mm. is because you would want to tell your story because it's you. They were not telling their story. They are talking about something greater. They are talking about the very thing that saves people from their sins. And they didn't want to bring attention to themselves. But surely it'd be more powerful evangelistically if they'd actually met Jesus to actually say, I, a, t a disciple of why? Jesus, met <laughs> Jesus, therefore I'm evidence, I, I first person testimony. Right. But this gentleman saying, oh no, I'm far too modest to say that. Right. I'm never going to mention the fact that I actually that. met no. Jesus. And I'm going to put it all in the third. doesn't make any sense. The Christians were never shy. And Paul, for example, boasts about how he saw Jesus. Three times, there's three stories in the book of Acts where he boasts to people how I saw Jesus. He calls it, by the way, a vision, which people with him on one of the stories didn't see anything at all. But he wasn't shy about boasting about his personal connection with Jesus. But you're saying Matthew was too modest to mention that he saw him. about the people writing Right. It's nothing well, to do with he's modesty. He's sent to the Gentiles right. and to speak to churches yep. that are going through problems, and of course he can talk about his personal experience. Just as like if I go to a church, that someone's in church mm. is dealing with growing up in care, I can use mm. my own story. Yep. The Gospels are a different purpose. The Gospels mm. are to tell you about the life of Jesus Christ. Not about its writers, but the life <clears> of the person <throat> that commands all men everywhere to repent and believe. Mm. And what is the message of Jesus in the earliest Gospels? Out of interest? The message of Jesus in the early Gospels? Yep is repent for the kingdom of heaven. Right. Does it say, believe in me because I'm going to die for your sins on the cross? Is that Jesus' message around Galilee? No, but I would never... I would never no, it's not. I no, would, no that's never, important. No, 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 this I is not the gospel present. of Jesus, and he's, he's no. agreed it's not the message no, of Jesus. that's not what I said. No, because I would never present, believe in me for I'm going to die for you. But what is the injil, the no, gospel of Jesus, have, that no, he no, preached, no, according no, to no, Matthew, Mark, no, and Luke? You are commanded to believe in Jesus because he is the God worthy yeah, of worship. Yeah. What is the message that Jesus went around preaching to the peasants of Galilee? Was it, I am God, believe in me, 
and I will die for your sins. The kind of message I normally hear from Christians here today. What was the angel of Jesus? He went around preaching, do you think? The plan for the kingdom of heaven is the plan. <clears throat> uh -huh. I'm going to go to Jerusalem, lay my life down for my sheep, and I, I can take my own life back up. Okay, I don't read that in Luke's, for example. I don't read that no, or, or in Mark. Not your standard. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm looking, sorry, at, looking for evidence. If sorry, if I'm, <laughs> quote, if I'm using the Bible, <clears throat> you have to come and step on my ground and accept it. No, you, you don't own the Bible, sir. No, the Bible is not your personal property. No, it's not mine. Well, well you talk as if it is. It's no, not. No, what I'm saying <laughs> is when I open the Bible, <laughs> the presuppositions you must have when I open that is this is the revelation of God and <clears> you <throat> have to obey it. <clears throat> so I'm not going to do this back and forth because it's very simple. Hmm. That's what I've time, but it's very simple. As a Christian, I accept what the Bible's on testimony is, that this is God speaking, which means I don't have the right to go in and go, well, Matthew was written a little bit earlier than John. I have to obey everything, which means I also have okay. to obey from Genesis <clears throat> through to Revelation. Okay. Man came to Jesus and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What did he say? What was Jesus' answer? If I came to you right now and asked you a question... No, I'm asking you what Jesus said according no, to the Bible. Not what I says, might say. Why do you call me good? There is no one good no. but God. Do you expect the God-man Jesus to not say that God is good? Do you expect him to be an atheist? No, he, I'm asking you, what did he say we have to do to be saved according to that passage? What did Jesus say to the rich young ruler? No, no, no. What must I do to be saved? What, what, you no, seem very reluctant to answer it. Shall I tell you what he no, said? No, because you're no. Not. No, okay. I won't tell you what he said then. He I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> the rich young ruler, who he does, by the way, economically, yeah. when Jesus meets political leaders... Yeah. Can you just tell me what he... With respect, sir, can you just tell me what he said before you interpret it? What was Jesus' answer calling to Mark chapter 10? A man comes to Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What was Jesus' Right, we're getting someone now. No, because what you're doing is no, he says no, that to a no, rich ruler. He can, can you, that can you perhaps quote me. it verbatim? I know the passage by heart. I mean, maybe it's unfair to ask you to... But I, should I tell you what it says by heart, according to the NIV? Good teacher. <laughs> What must I do in inherit eternal life? Jesus said, why do you call me good? There is no one good but God alone. Interesting answer. Then he says to the man, in response about how he is to be saved, obey the Jewish commandments, obey the Torah. The Torah. Yeah? Now the man, what had it? should we continue with this story? This story tells us about a really early story of Jesus. Which is very unlike the Christian Jesus that Christians preach today. A very different story. Obey the law, yeah? Obey the Sharia. If you want to please God, obey the Sharia. It's the, it's the same thing. You know what means what? came out of Jesus' mouth. It's, it's, well... God's law, God's law revealed in the Torah is explicitly... It's very similar. Jesus spoke Aramaic, which is a cognate Semitic Sem Sem language to Arabic. They're very similar languages. Sharia in this audience, okay? Where I'm assuming there's probably not that many Christians, which would be fair. I haven't, I haven't interviewed them yet, but we can okay. if you want. But in the audience but, of but like, say, Sharia, they're going to assume I, I do, the Old Testament law and Sharia the, the, are not the, the, same the, the halakha and the Sharia, the Jewish law and the, the Islamic law, are very similar no, in concept. Well, that's a different subject. We'll come back to that in a second. Coming back to what Jesus said in Mark 10, obey the law. The man says, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was a youth. And Jesus I had named a number of them. You lack one thing to be saved, Jesus said. What is the one thing, according to Jesus, a man lacked to be saved? This is really crucial if we're to get to the injil of Jesus rather than Christianity. What's the one thing Jesus said the man lacked? According to your Bible. Bill Adam. And you're going to get the whole story, so you're giving a, a, a very few words out of the whole thing. Okay, you lack one thing. Go and sell all your, your possessions, your wealth, and you will have treasure in heaven. That's the one thing he lacked. Yeah? Now, one thing he lacked was not bowing down and worshipping Jesus, believing in his death and resurrection, believing in Paul's gospel. The one thing he lacked to be saved, apart from obeying the Jewish Sharia, the halakha, the law, was to give his wealth to the poor. Nothing about putting his faith in Jesus to be saved. That's the one thing he lacked. This is not Christianity. Whatever it is, it's not Christianity. It's much closer to Islam and the Hadith and the Quran. So sorry, just as, and this is the last point, and I'm going to have to go. Okay. 
But just as I have no right to define Islam, you have no right to define Christianity. Jesus himself says, and this is what I'm going to finish on, this is a really important thing, unless you believe ego I mean, you will die in your sins. My last response to you is this, just as you think I should become Muslim, my response to you is this, turn from your sins to Jesus Christ or you will die in your sins. You're not going to address the passage we've just quoted, the earliest gospel, Mark 10. You've got to go, okay. All right, and you too, mate. And you too, Charles. No, no, you are presenting Just, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Over. <laughs> cool. So, 